Today we're going to show you my Tentec 425 linear amplifier, legal limit, it can do 18, uh, 1500 watts and then some. Um, I'm actually the original owner, the first and only owner. I bought this at the end of the 80s. I have used it maybe 20 hours total, of which most of that was standby, not actual transmitting and uh, uh, the reason is it has to do with a uh, neighbor that's kind of a jerk but I won't uh, bother you with the details it basically meant that high power is uh, not possible in this neighborhood so uh, this unit is uh, for all intents and purposes in new condition it's literally like new old stock 20 hours maximum I kid you not so today we're going to demonstrate it to you and show you that it uh, works very well, gives excellent power. I will show it to you in combination with my IC9100 transceiver which we'll use as the driving unit. And uh, we'll dump the power in this big ass dummy load, 2 kilowatt dummy load. And we'll use my uh, trusted uh, BIRD model 43 to show you uh, that we actually reach the power levels as intended. As you see we have a uh, 5 kilowatt slug which means that the full scale of this meter is 5 kilowatt. Full scale 5 kilowatt and that also means that the legal limit 1500 watts is uh, is about here in the middle of uh, this 10 and this 20. And uh, whatever we get out of it more will also be easily visible of course. Now the Tentec 425 uh, Titan has a standalone uh, power unit, power supply. This unit has a massive hypercell transformer that's bigger than any power amplifier on the market for legal limit today. It's heavy uh, and when shipped the transformer has to be taken out and, uh, and packed separately to prevent damage to the uh, aluminum case. Now I was designed to do that very easily, Tentec did that. Actually when I bought it, when I received it, the, uh, the, the, the transformer was actually mounted on a piece of wood and shipped separately. And it's very easy to put in, everything is connectorized. The amplifier runs off 220 volts, 240 actually. You can set it at 110, but then you need awfully thick wiring in your house. I uh, do not recommend that. Normally your fuses would trip your breakers. If you do that, but maybe you have a circuit that can handle it, then uh, you could do it. Internally you can wire it for that. But uh, factory, they are set for 240 volts AC, which is basically what you have for your washer dryer. And um, I also have it in the shack. And with that, it works excellent. There is a high and low voltage setting, which is for high low power. Maximum power requires high voltage. If you only require about 700, 750 watts from the amplifier, then you can set it at low. It drops down to 1500 volts instead of 25 and uh, the tubes will last longer that way. The fan has two speeds, fast and slow. Obviously I recommend to keep it in fast. It's a f it's pretty quiet fan anyway, so there is no reason to, uh, to switch it to slow. Kind of nice to separate power amplifier. Uh, the power supply that means you can put it under your uh, under your desk and the amplifier is actually not that heavy without the amplifier without the power supply so that means it's kind of nice on, uh, on your desktop it also means that the whole case is actually used for RF stuff and that means it's very roomy and, uh, and spacey buildup that prevents arcing and all kind of other nasty stuff if you see those uh, those Chinese and Russian boxes that you can get nowadays. Everything is in a single box and that makes the RF deck very cramped. And that gives you arcing and other nasty stuff. So with this amplifier you won't have that problem. It's built like a tank. You might know, you might know Tentec. They also uh, did a lot for the military. And when you see the insides of this amplifier that uh, clearly shows excellent uh, quality and uh, very good design. Like I said, two triodes, maybe I didn't say, two triodes from iMac. 3CX800A7s are uh, in, this, uh, in this unit. Each triode can do uh, 1200 watts PEP leisurely. 
So two parallel uh, can uh, do a whole lot more than that, as you can imagine. But uh, the legal power is 1500 watts, and that's probably where we should keep things. All right, let's uh, let's go turn it on and uh, no more talk, and show you a little bit what it can do. We'll start with the radio. Maybe a good idea to start at 80 meters. Obviously, we go uh, to low power to tune it up. I'll show you the uh, tune-up procedure. Uh, turn on the unit. We'll keep it in standby. It's just basically pass through. If you keep it in standby, even when it's warmed up. But uh, it's probably smart to keep it in standby when you start things. There we go. Now, as you can see, there is a weight light. That is according to manufacturer specs for the tubes. IMAX specified this tube to warm up between one and two minutes, I think it is. After the filaments have gotten power, the, uh, the uh, high, high voltage should not be applied after about one or two minutes. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, uh, that requires us to wait. This uh, unit has an uh, automated timer that prevents you from transmitting right away. And in this way, it guarantees maximum life for the actual tubes. As you can see, the uh, weight light, uh, weight LED is off, so we're ready to operate. Uh, as we tune this amp, it is essential that the grid current stays in check. You need to get the output power that you desire with minimum possible grid current, which can be controlled by tuning the load properly. And I'll show you how that works. Well, uh, give it a little bit of carrier here, not much. We are in FM mode just so that I have a carrier. Turn that on. As you can see, I uh, have my maximum here. We have at the moment uh, about 300 watts out, so it's not a lot. And we will start increasing drive and see what happens. You see grids going up, so I back that off with my load. It's really essential that you keep that in check. We can peak this here. As you can see, we are at actually 1.6. And I want to keep this low. So here we are 1.6 kilowatts. It can do more than that, but I'm not going to push it here. And we have that with about 60 watt output power on this transceiver. We are at 1.6 kilowatts. I'll uh, see what we get in single sideband. One, two, three, test. One, two, three, test. You see, we get. Uh, that's what I mean with pushing it. I shouldn't do that. You see I reach my output power with minimum grid current. It also shows you that these tubes are practically like new. Because the older tubes get, the more grid current they need to get uh, the maximum output power. And as you see we have practically nothing here for 1.6 kilowatt. And that's the way it should be. Alright, let's uh, try the amplifier at, uh, at 40 meters. All right, we're at 40 meters now. Let's see what we get. I already pre-tuned it. We're at uh, one and a half kilowatt. 40 meters, and that's about uh, 60 watt drive power. I don't want to go much higher. All right, we're now at uh, 15 meters. We're at uh, 1.5 kilowatt. 1.5 kilowatt. At minimum grid current. Very nice setting, and the transceiver is at about 60 watts, I think, 60 watts drive power. We'll do a single sideband test. Uh, 
as you see, we get uh, a little bit high. About uh, 1.7 kilowatts uh, with uh, 70 watts drive power. Works very well. 15 meters. Actually, there's a little bit more gain than on 80, which proves that the tubes are in excellent shape because bad tubes start to lose gain at higher frequencies, but like I said, this unit has almost no hours on it. So uh, high bands work just as fine as low bands. I got a tune at 10 meters. So 10 meter is installed in this one. And uh, let's see what we got. I already pre-tuned it for you. Grid current, keep it low. We are at uh, 1600 watts. 1700 watts, I think fine-tune it a bit and that's with about 70 watts of drive power so as you can see gain actually is better at the higher bands this is a good sign uh, let's see what it does in single sideband hang on for a second I got almost 2 kilowatts here, so I need to back it off a bit. Okay. Keep things in check a little bit. Works excellent from a pair of uh, 3CX uh, 800A7s. From the Tentec Titan. A uh, legal limit ultra linear professional uh, amplifier for the HF bands. Um, I don't know if you've seen test reports in the past. This this unit actually is one of the best amplifiers ever made when it comes to intermod or the lack thereof. This unit has an intermod at second order intermod level that's 45 dB uh, below PEP. That's, any, uh, that's better than anything on the market that you see today with uh, Chinese and Russian tubes I say uh, stay away from those go for a real iMac and uh, get yourself a real amplifier excellent performance built late 80s and it can still compete with anything that's on the market today as long as you know what you're doing remember what I said keep that grid current in check not above 60 milliamps and if you do that this thing will last your lifetime thank you for watching this video